Okay, here we're going to do a quick little run through of the heart, and we're going to actually start with some of the layers of the pericardium here. So, if we were to put this pericardium back on the heart, the outermost layer, this shiny layer that you're looking at, is going to be the pericardial or mediastinal pericardial pleura. Okay. Deep to that is going to be the fibrous pericardium, so this, the actual thickness of this layer is made by the fibrous pericardium. If you flip this over, the shiny layer that's on the inside of the fibrous pericardium is going to be the parietal lamina of the serous pericardium. Finally, the shiny layer on top of the muscle of the heart is going to be the visceral lamina of the serous pericardium, also known as the epicardium, okay? So, if something like a pin was placed through this and going all the way into the muscle of the heart, there would be four layers it would be passing through. The pericardial pleura, the fibrous pericardium, the parietal lamina of the serous pericardium, and finally the visceral lamina of the serous pericardium. This open area or cavity that's found between the visceral and parietal lamina of the serous pericardium is the pericardial cavity. So now let's look at some of the vasculature, or coronary vasculature. Starting here, we're looking at the auricular surface of the heart with our pulmonary trunk here and our conus arteriosus here. In this region, we can see our left coronary artery right here. That left coronary artery branches into the periconal interventricular branch and the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery. The circumflex branch travels through the coronary groove back here and is gonna give off the subsinuosal interventricular branch within the subsinuosal interventricular groove. Given that fact, we know that this heart is a bovine heart. The subsinuosal interventricular branch comes from the circumflex branch and the bovine. Finally, here we can see our right coronary artery traveling in the right side of the coronary groove. A difference that we see with the equine is observed here. This is an equine heart, and we know that because here we're looking at the atrial surface showing the right coronary artery coming through the coronary groove and giving rise to the subsinuosal interventricular branch. Similarly, in this very large pony heart, we can see that right coronary artery traveling through the coronary groove and giving off the subsinuosal interventricular branch. This horse, we can also see the anastomosis of the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery over here with our right coronary artery. So, in order to tell if a, horse, if a heart is from a horse or a bovine, we have to look at the branching pattern you can also just use, um, at least to give you a general idea, the fat content here. So the fat within these grooves of a bovine is gonna be very white and very crumbly and firm, whereas the fat in these grooves of a horse is usually more soft, almost buttery, and a yellow color. Finally, the other idea that you could also use to say this is a bovine heart is the presence of this vein that we see right here that has been opened up. We see that coming out here with this little nubbin and that's the left azygous vein which is present within the bovine heart. We will not see that on the equine heart. Next we're going to look at some of the internal structures of the heart. Here, the right atrium has been opened up, showing us the pectinate muscles of the right auricle, the sinus venarum, or the smooth-walled part of the right atrium. We also see this strip of muscle, which is the intervenous tubercle, in between what would have been the cranial vena cava and the caudal vena cava.
Here, when looking at the bovine heart, we can also see this intervenous tubercle. And the intervenous tubercle is almost kind of continuous with this strip of muscle, which is going to be the terminal crest or crista terminalis, which separates the right auricle from the right ventricle. Here is really nice, nicely demonstrated the pectinate muscles within the auricle. We can also see the presence of the ostium to the coronary sinus right here. Here would be the ostium of the caudal vena cava, and here would be the ostium of the cranial vena cava. When we move from the right atrium into the right ventricle, we have to pass through this valve, or the right atrioventricular valve, or tricuspid valve which is made up of three valvule or valve leaflets, and that's going to be the septal, angular, and parietal cusps. Septal, angular, parietal cusps. These cusps are held down by these little thin strips of tissue, which are the chordae tendineae, and those are attaching onto this thick nipple-looking structure, which is the papillary muscle. In the ventral regions of the ventricle, you can see these kind of beam-like structures of muscle. Those are going to be the trabeculae carniae. Yeah. And finally, you can also see this single beam spanning from the septum to the wall, the parietal wall, and that's going to be the trabecula septomarginalis.